in our stories. And our islands. It's in our waters. And across our land. It's in our history. And our people. It's in every grain of sand. Now is the time to come and find it. Now is the time to come and feel it. Scotland, a spirit of its own. Ten years old when I started, I wanted to learn a musical instrument. My next door neighbour, he said that he would teach me the pipes. Just after a couple of months, I had the bug, if you like. As soon as you put the kit on, you're straight into that role. It's a great feeling knowing that you're carrying on traditions and culture. Anybody that has ever came to watch the Edinburgh Tattoo, it's something they'll never forget. I've been on both sides. I've been a performer, and I remember going to the tattoo as a young boy. As soon as you come through the, the drawbridge at the castle and you see the, the crowd and the cameras, it makes the hairs in the back of your neck stand up. I've been fortunate enough to have been the lone piper at the castle. The couple of seconds before you strike, it's deadly silent, darkness. They flash a big spotlight on you. That's your cube. You'll see the flashes of all the cameras going off and you'll never be able to replicate marching out of the drawbridge. It's a, it's a brilliant city. There's not a lot of people, I would argue, could say that they get paid for doing something that they really love to do. Being in the military in a Scottish regiment and being Scottish myself, it doesn't matter where we are in the world, we always take it with us. How you doing? I'm Mark, um, and I've been with Visit Scotland now for around just over 10 years, but I'll tell you what, I've never been more excited to work in Scottish tourism than I have now, and that's largely to do with our New Year First Global Brand campaign that we've launched, and also to do with the strategy that goes along with it. A strategy that really needs all of you lot to get on board with it, or else it won't really work. So no pressure to me, I've got 30 minutes to get you on board. So fundamentally, what we're here to do is it hasn't really changed. So we've got um, create awareness and consideration um, with, with, with potential visitors and then engage with them through interest and information um, to make them want to feel as if coming to Scotland and Inspire. That lead on to business referrals, so kind of send them off to what accommodation to stay at, where to eat and drink, what events to go to. That will ultimately lead to uh, increase in incremental visitors, which will then ultimately lead to growth in the visitor economy. So that ultimately, our, our, our fundamental goal hasn't changed. That's what we're here to do. But in the last year, we've had conversations about how can we do it in a smarter way? How can we be better at it? And what we, what we decided and what we talked about was that when we do things like the Commonwealth Games and the Ryder Cup, when we act as one as a nation, that's when we really get it right. And that's when we show the world how great Scotland is. So how do we do that? How do we do that as a norm, as an industry? How do we do that as normal practice? Um, and instead of hanging our hats on, on the big events that we get um, here. So we thought about our brand, and we thought ultimately we need to see ourselves as, as merely the guardians of the Visit Scotland brand, merely the guardians of it. And we need to empower those people, empower you folks, empower everyone else in the industry, empower everyone who's passionate about Scotland to talk about how great Scotland is. Because with things like the tightening of the public purse, the, the increase in the living wage, it, it really is difficult and doesn't really make sense anymore to market um, a destination individually and in, through individual efforts. We need to pool our resources together um, and do it together. Um, we've, we, we start in a good place. You know, um, go, uh, tourism uh, economy is, is, is growing 3 to 4% year on year. Last year, we had an increase in visitors of 5.5% to Scotland. Um, the events industry alone is, is valued at 3.5 billion to the Scottish economy. So, you know, we're on a good place. But in order to grow uh, as, we, as we go towards 2020, we need to think smarter and, and, and work together in order to grow efficiently and effectively. 
In order to do that, though, we need a common goal, and we believe that the common goal is advocacy, okay? So how do we create positive attributes at each stage of the, of the visitor's journey? So when they're online, having we look at their iPad and, and trying to pick a destination, to when they arrive here and they check in in a hotel, to when ultimately they go and, and experience one of your fantastic events. So how do we ensure that they have a positive experience at each point in that journey so that they actually go, wow, Scotland is amazing, and I want to tell everyone about it? Because that's what we want. We want everybody to talk about how amazing Scotland is. Why do we want everybody to talk about it? Well, it's a noisy marketplace these days. You know, it's reported that consumers um, are served up to a thousand ads a day. So it's hard to get that cut through. There's the increase in destinations now with low budget airlines being available. And with that, the perceived cheapness of going to other destinations. Um, and also as well, the evolving nature of the consumer uh, behavior. And, and it's evolving at a, at a particular rate. And how is it evolving in tourism? Well, 68% of our visitors um, come uh, start their journey online, okay? And 60% of those come from search engine traffic. 64% expect real-time assistance, one-to-one -one there and there, um, and things like mobile penetration increasing and, and lower uh, footfall into our VIC. So we know that the consumer behavior and how they act, interact with information is changing. And we also know that, you know, this isn't a new thing. The technological platform, the digital platform has, has been around, you know, about a decade or so. So it's vast, but that only means, the vastness of it means there's plenty of opportunities for us. We just need to be smart, smart about what opportunities we take and how we do that together. And if you think about marketing sort of 10, 15 years ago, okay, a lot of it was in that top part of the circle, the brand and marketing. You know, it was us kind of as an organization, shouting at people, if you like, telling them how great Scotland is and why they should come and visit. But now we can be a wee bit smarter. And if you look below the line, we've got user-generated content and content partnerships. So this is information sources for potential visitors to, um, from trusted sources to convince them why Scotland is so great. There's still a place for traditional marketing. Um, and, and, that, and we still will put a level of spend into that, but we want to do it in fresher ways. So you'll have seen our, our television ad there before it came on, and we've used um, time-lapse video uh, with slow motion video along with real-time video. And we stitched that together to create this, uh, to show off Scotland in this very dramatic way. Um, you know, we're talking to audiences a wee bit more personally. So there's an example of our, of our um, London travel market um, advertising. So swap the Northern Line for the Northern Lights. And we need to be shamedly optimistic about opportunities that fall in our lap as well. So the likes of Outlander, which is a, a big success in many countries. And you know, we need to uh, figure out a way to use it. We need to use these opportunities to really showcase Scotland and show it well, as well as the events that we have. So we've done it well for the Ryder Cup. We've done it well for the Commonwealth Games. We've got the Solheim Cup, lots of big events coming. So how do we use those? How do we maximize that opportunity as well to really showcase Scotland? Our big challenge is to be part of the internet, okay? So, um, as I said, I've worked for Visit Scotland a long time, and, and you know, a lot of our, our objective before was, and, and our big task was to get people onto visitscotland.com, okay? So if we got people there, there was plenty of information, there was ways for them to book, you know, that was, that was a win for us. Um, but, and it's important that we get the information on that right, because there's 20 million visits a year go to that website. So we need to make sure they're being served with the right content, and they can find things easily, and, and we're doing our job well there. But how do we engage with uh, the half a billion people across the internet that are engaging with Scottish content, how do we make sure they're being served really good quality content um, across all different platforms of broadcast media, consumer, travel brands, industry partners? How do we weave really good quality content right across the internet so that search engines love us and point people towards that content? And what we need to do is, if you think about the visitor journey in um, kind of three simple steps, okay? If we simplify it and say, okay, at one stage where they access information. So if they're thinking, okay, I wanna come, I wanna go on a UK holiday, but you know, where do I go? Do I go to England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland? Where do I go? So that's kind of step one, where they're accessing information. Then down to where they think, okay, I think Scotland serves my needs. That's, uh, that's on my radar. I think I'm gonna go there, but it's, it's quite a vast country. There's cities, there's rural, there's islands. What am I gonna do? Right down to when they've decided where in Scotland they're gonna go to, and they really need that richer information about what to see and do in the area that really um, deepens that, that connection that they've had and that experience that they've had so they have a fantastic experience. So we could focus our spend and a lot of our time in that top area um, when they're searching for a UK holiday. We could do that, but that 
doesn't necessarily make sense. The smart way to do that is to create partnerships. So create partnerships with like a TripAdvisor, New York Times, and Guardian, um, so that we're giving them content that they know their audiences will interact with and engage with, or we create opportunities for them to develop stories and um, to talk about Scotland. So, um, you know, there may be a certain level of spend there, but it's working with them in a, spot, in a smarter way, in a, in, a, in a partnership approach. And then this is where we focus our efforts in. When they think, okay, listen, I think Scotland's uh, the place to go. That's going to fit my needs. That's where we um, spend a lot of our time, put a lot of our effort in to um, inform them about what there is to see and do in Scotland and all the experiences that they have and where they should go. So that when ultimately they, they decide on what destination they go to, so they're going to come to Fort William, then this is where the industry and, 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 and you guys and you folks get on board because you're the experts of what there is to see and do on the ground, what great events they can go to, what they can see and do. Um, and, and so um, it's, it's you guys that really need to talk to them in various different ways to inform them about how they get the best experience um, uh, when, they're, when they're here. So that's ultimately, very simplistically, the three stages of what a consumer will go through when they're uh, interacting with information. And that's how we see us working together on that. But to do that, we need a compelling narrative. So we went to our markets and we said, to them, listen, what is it about Scotland that really sets us apart? Um, you know, what is it that's different that we should be talking about? And ultimately, there was no one thing that sets us apart. It's, a, it's an accumulation of experiences that makes Scotland special. But what everybody was said was they had this, and um, it was this feeling that really stirred the soul that Scotland had, and they had this emotional connection with. Um, and, and many people were saying, there's this, there's this undeniable spirit within the people and the landscapes um, that really can't be duplicated by any other country. And we thought that's it, the spirit of Scotland. And that's what our narrative should be. So we've created a bit of a poem to kind of explain how it transcends throughout many different elements of Scotland, its history, its people, its culture, and, uh, and its events. But for me personally, what the spirit of Scotland is, it's that, it's that special moment you have. It's that, it's that moment you have where you just, you know you're gonna remember it forever and, and you want to share it. Um, so if I think about the Commonwealth Games a few years, Ago, right? It was quite an, uh, it was an emotional summer for me. I'd been in Glasgow for 14 years and I was just about to move uh, this direction of the country. Um, so it was an emotional time, but to uh, add to that emotion, you know, we, we put on this incredible event, um, and we really, as a nation, as a city, as a people, we really got it right, and it was, it was an incredible way to spend your last summer at that event, and the highlight of that was sitting at uh, Hamden Stadium, um, you had your screens coming up saying, hold your wish, um, you know, nice Scottish humour coming through for people to be quiet when the competitors were racing, so Lindsay Sharp win her medal, and the whole... Um, stadium just erupting in this incredible energy. To when I was leaving that night and queuing for a train and, and getting a bit of banter with the Clyde Siders Clyde, Clyde who were chatting to you and just making sure you had a good experience on your way home. And I just thought, man, we've absolutely nailed it. I was proud of it. And I just wanted to, to share that with people. To a few months ago when I was at um, Hinterland, uh, which was the launch of the Festival of Architecture. So that's a, a series of uh, inspiring events throughout our year of innovation, architecture, and design. Um, and I was at Hinterland and it was just, it it was this incredible experience of, of walking around a, a, a ruined monastery um, lit up in special ways to really show that architecture off. And you were in the middle of this sort of gloomy forest at nighttime. And it was just this otherworldly experience. Um, and it was incredible. And it was, I, was, I was so delighted to be part of that experience. And again, I wanted to share it. So a few weeks ago, whenever myself and my wife were in Isla, and we went to wee walk um, along the coast. And uh, we found this wee uh, beach, this wee cove. And we climbed out onto the Rock Peninsula and kind of sat there for half an hour and we had this 180 degree view of seals just starting to um, wake up and play in the water or otters having a bit of banter with each other um, and lucky enough to see a, a, a fin of a dolphin for a split second as it came out of the water um, and I just thought this is incredible. It was one of the most amazing experiences I've had because I've never been that close and immersed in, in that kind of natural environment before to see all that wildlife was incredible. So I took out my phone I wanted to get, take a bit of a memory of, for myself and I took a 10 second video and then later on that day I thought okay I'm I kind of want to share this. Okay, it's not something David Attenborough would use, but you know, I quite, I quite like it and I want to share it out there and I put it out on Twitter. Now, I only had three retweets and eight likes, okay? I'm not that popular on Twitter. I don't have that many followers. But what's interesting is out of those people, one of them was a blogger that has 3,000 followers. Another one was Seal Scotland that has 80,000 followers. So automatically, that bit of content could have been seen by a lot wider audience. And who knows how that's influenced someone at whatever stage of the journey they're at, whether Scotland hadn't been on the map before and it's suddenly on there or whether they're wanting to come here but they're not quite sure and it's convinced them to take an island break. So that to me is what the spirit of Scotland is. It's that special moment that you want to share and it's ultimately us 
us all telling our, our stories of experiences that we've had. Um, and there's plenty of ways to tell stories. You can tell your stories through, through blogs, through emails, through one-to-one. -one. Um, you saw our video of Andy there before I came on. And you know that's an interesting way that we've kind of brought out the people's stories of Scotland. And, and what do they find special about Scotland? What is it about the area they're from, or what they do, or what Scotland is about that makes it special? And, and that content is there for you and available for you to use as well. So if you go onto our YouTube channel of youtube.com forward slash visit Scotland, then we have a, we have a playlist of, of all the Spirit of Scotland material and there's you know, 15 or so videos on there and it's growing, it's growing constantly. Um, and that is there for you to use that you can share out or you can embed on your website and some of them have event direct event links, um, but others um, can be used in terms of showcasing what your region is about, that your event's taking place in. So you know, it's, it's telling people, listen, this event is just one of the, one of the many great experiences you're going to have. If you come and enjoy this event, you can also experience the region interact with these kind of people. So those videos are there for you to use. Because ultimately, we know the events industry has spirit, OK? Um, like from the likes of the determination and the guts of, of competitors and things like the World Orienteering Championships to the, to the spirit of the, of the multiple nations that come to enjoy our events and cheer them on and show them the warmth, um, to things like the interaction that, that visitors have with, with events people. So the, you know, the Spirit of Speyside Whiskey Festival, where they're sitting, chatting, learning about the culture, learning about the local food and drink product, um, and really learning learning about the soul of the area. Um, to when things don't quite go to plan with events. Um, and this was the Taiwi Music Festival last year where um, you know, they put on some great gigs, but ultimately um, the, the weather uh, overpowered them and, the, and people had to be evacuated. And this was a national story well and out, but if you look at the highlighted line, the Taiwi Music Festival goers were sheltered in schools, uh, airport, and the people's homes. And I just think that's an incredible representation of the spirit that the event industry has and what Scotland as a people have. And I think that's a great way, that was a great way of communicating what we are as a people and the welcoming nature that we have. So we launched our campaign in February, um, and we launched it sort of with a big, um, you know, hung our hat on a bit of a hashtag, hashtag Scott Spirit Up. Um, but that has developed to become more than just a hashtag, simply a hashtag. We're kind of coining the phrase of Scott Spirit to be that, that passion, that, that pride, that emotional connection that you have with Scotland that makes you want to share it with others and tell other people your stories. Um, and the, and we, we, for it to work, we need everyone behind it. So we've created an industry ebook, and, and if you go on to visitscotland.org, you can download that. Now, it's an ebook for the entire uh, in tourism industry. So it's not specifically events uh, related, but you will find a lot of really useful information in there in terms of how to write blogs, social media tips. Um, you'll get access to our uh, YouTube videos. You'll get access to our digital media library as well, which has many images that you can use. Um, and some of these images are event specific and others are more related to the area. So again, that idea of, of showcasing you know, the area that your event is in to kind of explain to them, this is, you can have a much deeper, richer experience here, and this is the overall um, things that you can enjoy when you're here. Um, to, um, we've got our, we've published our content plan in there as well, which I, I think you'll find useful, and that, that kind of puts out the themes that we publish per month um, for, for the next year. And I think that if you look at that and see, does your event align with that content plan? Because ultimately, as a country, we're talking about that. So that's a good time for you to put out your event message um, to align with that, to amplify that message. And sometimes it's an obvious link. Sometimes it's Highland Games. Sometimes it's um, event festivals, winter festivals. There's an obvious link you know how to slot in. But in other times, it's walking or cycling or mountain biking that we're doing a general message about those, that, those products in Scotland. So you know, you might have a walking festival, the Mountain Bike World Cup, um, that you tie into. There's, there's months when we talk about family breaks and family days out again, is your event particularly family oriented or that's your target market? And you can help amplify your message during that time. And to help, um, to help you folks kind of think about how your events and how the industry can, can display what the spirit of their event is about, um, we created seven different spirits. So we've got spark, guts, fun, humor, warmth, determination, spark. And those are our seven spirits that we hope that most events will uh, identify with. So if you think about the Mountain Bike World Cup, which is on this weekend, if you haven't get your, got your tickets, I would recommend going up there. Um, and and this, is, you know, this really does display the, the, the determination, the guts of the competitors. Um, and I think their branded of We Are Legend really aligns itself nicely to the spirit 
spirit. It's these legendary um, competitors who are throwing themselves down a mountainside um, in and amongst this legendary scenery that makes the World Cup in Scotland so special. Um, and then you've got later on, you've got the, the deep time that's happening with the Edinburgh International Festival. And this, this um, incredible event of, of, of public art display and illumination to really bring 350 years of, of Edinburgh's heritage to life um, really shows spark and the innovation side of our country and how we can, how we can do events. Um, and, and again, I'm very much looking forward to that event. Um, and there's other ways as well. There's the Glasgow Comedy Festival with the humour. There's Dig It when they were at Expo. They had the fun element um, of asking people to dress up and, and tweeting things out of people in costumes to, to the soul of, of us as a country creating things um, with the likes of the Pitt and Remark Festival or the Creole Food Festival. So hopefully you can recognise in yourselves and for your event how it can tap into to what our spirits are. Because ultimately we need everyone involved and we need everyone beyond our industry involved. So there's, you know, we've got, we've got politicians that have got on board, you know, Mo Farah there celebrating Scott Spirit when he was here in Edinburgh. Um, and we just want to, we want everyone to post and to, and, to, and to use the hashtag of Scott Spirit as well, to post information up there so we can see it. So if you as an event can think of um, how you can display that hashtag, either pre-arrival or when they're on the ground, we've got a thousand people a day using this hashtag and interacting with this hashtag. So it's a good way for you to promote what your event's about and to get a bit of content out there and when the when your visitors are here enjoying your event if it's displayed and um, when they're when they're in the place and on the ground then they're going to take pictures they're going to take videos they're going to share a bit of content and um, that a wider audience can see to identify what what your event is about. And with people using that hashtag as well, we're kind of repurposing it in various different ways. And we've got a wall on visitscotland.com as well, which we pull people in. So this is real people telling folks the experiences they've had and why Scotland is so great, rather than us as an organization telling people why Scotland's so great. Um, and these are just some examples then. Uh, so, you know, the Glasgow International Comedy Festival, they use Scott Spirit in, in an image that went out in a tweet and the humour aspect of it. From our point of view, you know, learnings that we've made is that um, what people really act, act engage with really um, wow images, you know, those really impactful images um, that, 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 that stand out. And people seem to engage with posts that have those. So, you know, if there's a way for you to display your event with a really impactful image, I'd recommend that. Great pieces of video as well, people really engage with, um, you know, and that's potentially easier for events that are year on year. So you're recording it one year to kind of show off in the next year what it is about. But, you know, short, nice bits of video of, of one minute, a minute and a half, and really find that we, we engage folk with that. To think about how we use the people uh, at the event. So, you know, in terms of celebrities that might come to the festivals or athletes that might come to an athletic event, is there people there that have um, big followings that we can somehow encourage in a way to talk about what the spirit of Scotland is to them through blogs, through social media, whatever it might be? These people have a big following. So, is there a way, whether they're from Scotland or whether they've been here and they've experienced what the spirit of Scotland is about, you know, how do we, how do we make that connection and get them on board as well? Unique things as well, you know, our audience love unique things about events. What makes this event different to any other event I'm going to go to? So nice wee um, unique elements to it to tell the consumer um, will we'll register with them. It's that added different experience that they'll have and um, that they're looking for. Or just unique bits of content. So we had Mark Beaumont cycling around the Hebrides um, recently and they really, the island wanted people out to cheer him on as he, was, as he was going around. So they put a tracker on him and you could track him around a map as to where he was going to be and when. So people knew he's going to be near my town soon and he got out and they get out and, and cheer him on and you know so that was a bit of interesting content that, that was shared out there and people interacted with um, and we will retweet as well event posts that go out there where we can um, but for that we ask that it's a simple message sometimes um, messages could be very complicated so an example there of Creel Food where that was a basic simple message tickets on sale now you know they're available this is where you can get them and we retreated and supported that so um, we'll look out for that as well and, and retreat where we can can. Um, and that really goes towards all you know, aspects of, of you know, to emails as well, big impactful images. Um, if you are, um, you know, as, think about time as well for things like emails. So, you know, try and get the information to the consumer at least two months out before the event so that they have time to prepare and think about how that event slots into everything else they want to see and do in Scotland. So just try and give them good time of that information. More important for the audience outside of Scotland, but it's an important factor to consider. So these are some of our creative that we created for 
for the um, Spirit of Scotland campaign. So big, wow, impactful images with, with uh, sort of emotive messages that, that connect with them. And on there, we put a bit of a search icon as well to encourage people to then go online to search about them, search about Scotland, and to interact with all the incredible uh, content that we'll be creating. We launched our website as well in February, um, and... Uh, 50% of our visitors were coming onto our website from mobile and tablets, and, and our website wasn't optimized for that, so we really need to make that difference. So it's now mobile optimized, um, and we're serving people really interesting content in, in interesting ways and easier ways. Um, I would encourage you that if you don't already have your event listed on .com, that that's a free listing. So again, if you go on to visitscotland.org and download that um, ebook, it'll advise you how you can do that. But those are 20 million visitors that we're getting um, that, that may see your message. And this website is evolving all the time. So shortly we're going to be, um, we know that people like a personal one-to-one -one service. If you think about that statistics of 64% want um, interaction, real-time assistance, um, we're going to create our way, uh, uh, sorry, launch our web chat service um, very shortly where people can have that personal service. We've, we've, we've done that personal service before. We've got it right in the likes of our uh, visitor information centers over the years, but now with the change of different platforms, we need to find other channels to do that with. And we're going to be launching our, our web chat service and also our trip planner functionality. So we'll allow people to um, look, set up an account for themselves so that they can store information about what they want to see and where they, what, where they want to go in Scotland and to help create a bit of an itinerary for them. So if you think about, you know, I've got the Amazon app. If you think about that, you know, I've got an account on there and I've got a wish list of, of everything I want to buy that I never quite get to the bottom of. So that's kind of a similar thing in that we're going to allow people to pull in everything they want to see in Scotland so that they can plan their trip. So that might be an interesting tool for you to share as well um, through your events, uh, websites, or whatever it might be to kind of encourage people, listen, when you're coming, here's, here's how to kind of plan our event in as well as everything else you want to see and do in Scotland. Um, and all, and at the end of June, we're going to be launching uh, what we're very excited about, which is our online community. Um, and this is essentially an online forum, okay, where we get passionate people about Scotland talking about what's great about Scotland and, and what people should see and do. So if you think about, um, you know, if anything, I've got an iPhone. So if I'm struggling with something on my iPhone, you know, I'll Google it. Um, and immediately, more often than not, I'll go straight to an Apple forum where it's not the Apple resource telling people how to resolve that problem or, or give them information. It's, it's a community of Apple supporters and, and people that are proud of, of, of that product um, informing me how to get around that. And that's essentially what we want to provide here. We want to use the passion and the pride of people who love Scotland. So all of you guys in the room, all the rest of people throughout industry and, and everyone out there who has a passion for Scotland to log, log themselves as a user and be there and available to chat to folk and to just uh, involve themselves in conversations to say, oh, this is a great place to go to stay. This is a great place to eat. This is an incredible event to go to. Um, and there, there's going to be event discussions on there. So for instance, Mike and Bike World Cup this weekend, there might be a discussion started on that. Um, so the event organizers there could have a we um, tell people, listen, this is what, how you really maximize this event, and these are the gems you need to know to get the most out of your day there. Um, and then outside of that, the people of Fort William could kind of go, if you're here for the Mountain Bike World Cup, you need to um, eat here. You need to also see and do this. Um, and then beyond that, again, people can go, okay, if you're interested in mountain biking, why don't you extend your trip and come down to the borders? There's a great mountain biking product there, and you can experience it. So these discussions can lead to really interesting ways of, of chatting to people in a personal way and to really give them a great insight into what they can see and do and enjoy Scotland. And that's going to be launched at the end of this month. I'd really encourage you to think about how you as individuals, how you as your organization um, can use this um, to help promote the nation of Scotland and help promote the events industry. So it'll be launched on visitscotland.com forward slash community at the very end of this month. Speaking of communities then, we also have our physical communities as well. So we've got our eye centers, um, which are our rebranded visit, uh, visitor information centers where people can walk in and get personal service. Um, but we've recognized that we can't just sit there and wait for visitors to walk past to pop in. So we're working with partners throughout the country um, in, a, in a program called I Know. So people that know their area really well are passionate or spirited people that want to tell visitors um, just uh, what they can see and do um, in their local area. So we're working with national partners, the likes of um, NTS and and Historic Environment Scotland as well as local partners as well, um, and just spirited um, people that really are knowledgeable about their area so that the visitor can interact and get local knowledge on the ground um, from multiple sources when they're here. 
We're also, in terms of getting visitors, uh, to getting information out to the visitors, we're launching our Koo vans as well. So we've got three Koo vans. We've got um, Hamish, Archie, and Morag, who are out there now, and they're going to be traveling the country in spring and summer, and they're going to go into different landmarks, but they're also going to be going to events as well. Um, and these have proved very successful um, currently, with a few weeks that they've been live, of people kind of coming up, wanting to take their selfie with the vans, um, but then our, our energetic coup visors that are there, you know, we're chatting to them then about what, what are you doing here, what, you know, and giving them information about what they can see and do in the area and uh, bits of video and content that they can see um, to, to excite them about what else they could experience while they're here. So again, if this is something you feel might be an added benefit, an added value to your event, you know, get in contact with us and we'll certainly consider that as well to send um, uh, Hamish Archie or Morag um, to your event. Um, as well as, um, I just want to talk as well about our charity side to our, our new strategy. Um, and we were, we were horrified to learn of the start of one in three families in Scotland don't get to holiday in their own country. Um, and we didn't really think that was right. You know, uh, we felt that everybody should be allowed to experience their own country and be allowed to have those memories as a family of enjoying, of enjoying Scotland. So um, we, we launched an initiative with the Family Holiday Association and several uh, partners throughout the industry who provided um, free experiences and free breaks. Um, to, to get on board and, and we're very proud of this initiative of, of trying to make um, you know, a, a difference in our society but we're only really scratching the surface and that strategy is we're currently looking at that and how we can develop that over time so please if that's something you're interested in getting involved in as well you know, keep your ears out for, for how that strategy develops and if it's something you'd like to get involved in to, to um, help, help the community around you then please, um, you know, please get in contact as well. So some kind of top line stats of, of the activity so far. So there's been over 100,000 uses of, of Scott Spirit, the hashtag Scott Spirit since launch. As I said earlier, there's 1,000 uses a day of this. So have a think about how you, as, a, as an events organization, can, can use that to get content out there, how you can influence um, people that are enjoying your event to use it to talk in real time about um, what, they're, what they're experiencing and enjoying at your event so other people can access and, and um, access that content. We trended two in Twitter in the UK, 20 in Twitter worldwide, and there's been over 4 million views of, of our documentaries and our, and our ad, which you, a couple of which you saw before I came on. So um, people are really enjoying and digesting this content. So have a think, you know, is that a way of showcasing um, what your area is about um, and, and the deeper experience that they're going to have? And, 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 or, or is it something that you can display at your event? So at the Mel Row Sevens recently, um, they had our advert up on the big screen um, for the audience in between matches to kind of show that and to, and to get them inspired about Scotland. So that content is there for you to use and, and, and for you to have a think about the best use of that. Um, and, we, and we donate 100 um, holidays to, to disadvantaged families. So. In summary, some of the things I've been talking about is, um, so if you haven't gotten a free event listing of Visit Scotland, um, get yourselves on there and do that. And we've got our YouTube playlist, have a think about how you can use those films. Our multimedia library as well, there's a wealth of images there um, available free for you to use. So have a think about, is there a way you can use that to um, showcase the area in which your event's in? Um, have a look at our content plan as well and see if your event aligns with that. Not every event will, but I think, I think a good proportion will. So um, have a look and see how you can help amplify the message at that time. Um, join the Scott Spirit Buzz, how can you promote that hashtag and, and promote your event through that hashtag and to join the I Know Scottish community as well. So please have a think. Um, I think this is a real kind of game changer for us in terms of having an army of, of volunteers uh, that are passionate about Scotland, talking about Scotland. So have a think about how you can, how you can do that. Um, I, as I said, I've not got any, hardly any Twitter followers, so please, if you, if you like, join me on Twitter. A um, bit of personal stuff, bit of marketing stuff, bit of Scotland stuff, it's your choice. Um, and also uh, my email address there as well. And if, if after today you think, I've got this incredible idea of how we can promote the spirit of Scotland with our event in tow, um, you know, please um, um, drop me a line. Uh, some ideas go places, some ideas don't, but all I ask is that you come to me with enthusiasm of an idea and we'll have a really good chat about it. Um, so listen, thank you very much for uh, listening. Ultimately, for this to succeed, um, we need to market Scotland with Scotland, okay? So we need to market Scotland with everyone in this room, um, with everyone that has a pride and a passion for Scotland, everyone that's got Scott spirit in this room, in the entire industry, out there, um, telling the world why Scotland is such a great nation and showing the world why we're such a great events destination. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.